Bright Memory Infinite is an incredibly ambitious project for a single person to manage in their off time. Yet this developer clearly learned a lot from the initial Bright Memory release. Infinite is an upgrade over the original game in almost every imaginable way. It's an interesting project that I probably should have looked at sooner. Hey, Derek here. Yep, it's that time. It's time for Into the AF. If you've been around on this channel, you've definitely seen me wearing these shirts already. These shirts are incredibly comfortable. They're very soft. They have no tag to scratch the back of your neck. They stretch, they don't rip. I really enjoy them. And best of all, they also look really good. I mean, they're quite colorful. They have designs for a bit of everyone. And they're constantly adding more designs. If you go to their website, they have a new arrivals tab. So be sure to check those out. And again, I really can't stress how soft these things are. I've watched this so many times and it's still very soft. And when I say washed, I mean, I go mountain biking in these. I cover these in dirt. They don't rip when they get snagged on branches, yet I wash them and they're good as new. Into the AM also sells pants, tank tops, hoodies, hats. If you want it, they probably have it. And of course, they have their bundle deals. You can get three basic tees for 45 or three graphic tees for 60. And if you go to intotheam.com slash dragon shirts, you can get 10% off site wide. This 10% off stacks on these bundles. So as always, a huge thanks goes to Into the AM. They are so easy to work with. I'm not talking through some marketing agency. They directly contacted me and they wanted me to try out their shirts. They seemingly like my content. So hey, I'm always super thankful for them and I'm super happy to actually support something I like using. So once again, thanks to Into the AM, and now let's talk about Bright Memory Infinite. The original Bright Memory was a proof of concept hack and slash first person shooter that was fun, but very flawed. Bright Memory Infinite improves on the first game in every imaginable way. Interestingly enough, Wikipedia describes this game as a remake of the first game, but no, this is nothing like the first game at all. The only connection is that you play as Sheila, the same main character as the first game, but the story is totally different, the combat's totally different, the graphics have been improved, these are different games. Let's talk about those graphics. Thankfully, I have none of the problems I had with the first game. This game looks fantastic for a single person to develop and they added even more NVIDIA options. You still have ray tracing like the first game, but now there's DLSS and NVIDIA Reflex. I love seeing these options. They genuinely make the gameplay experience much better. And I had no crashes, the game didn't stutter, and the frame rate was smooth the whole way through. Although I should mention I was not playing this with DirectX 12. DX12 always just kind of seems to run poorly no matter what game, so that's probably something on my end. But even without DX12 and ray tracing turned on, the lighting was still rather good. Ray tracing can make a big difference, but you get what you Get. Clearly, a lot of time was put into these environments. Now, the developer lives over in China, thus was inspired by Chinese mythology, and I'm totally fine with this. As I mentioned in the original Bright Memory video, this leads to an interesting location with interesting enemies. And unlike the first game, you can rebind your controls, thank you! Not being able to rebind your controls was just an absurd thing. I have no idea why the first game was like that. In the second game, you can rebind everything except the use key. Why? Why is the use key stuck to F? It's not unmanageable, but E is the standard use key for almost everything else. I kept accidentally attacking the wall because I was trying to pick up ammo. I also wanted to use E for the grappling hook, but that's tied to F and this got me killed a few times. Because holding down the E key will cause you to do a sword lunge forward and yeah, there's a cliff there. Anyway, aside from that one little small thing you'll eventually get used to, Graphically, it's a solid pass. Animations and cutscenes can still give you that vibe of a poorly dubbed anime, but these cutscenes are still leagues better than the first game. Long time no see, Shelia. Carter, why are you? I advise you to stay out of this matter. You still play as Sheila, working for the SRO. I don't really know who these people are, but I do know you're part of the government. On one of your jobs, a black hole opens up just above the ground, which is obviously not good. This seems to cause a bunch of temporal displacements, meaning ancient enemies are going to be attacking you. Apparently, they want to take over the world. It's one of those stories. It's also pretty vague and not told very well. Until the last cutscene, you're not going to know what's going on. Still though, you're really not playing this game for the story. It doesn't matter too much. Let's move to the gameplay. Movement is most 
mostly the same from the first game, and I still have the same complaint when it comes to dodging. You have walking and sprinting, meaning you can only dodge to the left, right, or backwards. You can't dodge forward, that'll just make you sprint. But at least they finally just gave me a regular double jump. Thank goodness. The first game, you had to hold the space bar down as you were jumping to get an extra height on your jump, rather than just, you know, having a double jump like any other game. In this game, the controls are your standard exosuit controls. There's also wall running, but you really only do it in a few platforming sections. I never did this in combat. I don't even think I could do it anywhere in any combat arena, so it doesn't really matter much. The main point is that the movement is serviceable, but I really wish I could decouple boost from sprint. In fact, the controls are a big complaint to have with this game. They were clearly made for a controller. Let me give you an example. For your sword attack, you can just mash E to get a regular sword swing, you can hold E to launch the enemies into the air, or you can hold E while sprinting to charge a totally different attack. You can also jump and then hold E to an attack from above. This one mostly worked as intended. However, I found it very easy to accidentally do the wrong attack because it just required you to be sprinting to do the other attack you didn't want to do. For a controller, having things bound to less buttons makes sense, but I have a keyboard, let me just bind it to something else. This is almost the same problem Halo Infinite had with its equipment. On PC, you had to press a button to equip the equipment you wanted to use and then press the use equipment button. Why the extra button push? Why not just let me press use equipment and use it? I have more keys. I don't need to equip it and then push another button. While playing Infinite, I literally made macros so everything was a one button press instead of two and the game felt so much better. I have talked to so many people that did the same thing and they didn't get the idea from someone else. It's just a huge nuisance. Now imagine that, except for you're getting the wrong attacks and you can understand how annoying this is. I imagine melee combat would be significantly easier with a controller, but then aiming would be worse and so would quickly turning to other enemies, so... Take what you want. Do you want better aim and faster enemy acquisition, or do you want better melee? Anyway, the gunplay is pretty standard. If you've played one of the advanced movement Call of Duty games, then you basically use these guns. You have an assault rifle, you have a shotgun, you have a snipe rifle, and you have a fully automatic pistol, which I actually really like, but the full auto pistol basically serves as a high fire rate SMG. At least in gameplay functionality, you know what I mean. So none of that really stands out, although I do find having to constantly reload in a game like this to be more of a pain. I do still want reloading to be there, however I would like there to be some sort of a backpack reload system. You are wearing an exosuit, so you could technically lore-wise make that work. I mostly really like backpack reloading systems. Take RoboQuest for example. If you've shot a weapon and then you put it on your back, you can actually see it recharging in the bottom right. The weapon is reloading on your back. This is actually very clever because it encourages you to swap weapons and use your full arsenal but also doesn't require you to stop and reload everything in the middle of combat. But it also allows for those nice reloading animations that we all like to look at. Yeah, Bright Memory Infinite doesn't have the solution, and it's actually even more of an issue in the first game, which I don't think I remembered to mention in that video. In this game, it's a little less of an issue because you're probably going to be using your sword more than anything else. You get quite a lot of abilities in this game. And you also get the added ability to block and counter enemies. Your enemies are a combination of Call of Duty style enemies and mythological enemies. They may attack a range or they may just be a brawler. Yeah, this is a mashup of your traditional first person shooter and something like say Devil May Cry. And it works quite well. Blocking enemies that try to shoot at you will reflect their bullets back at them. Although, you'll end up waiting a long time for this because they are awful shots. It's kind of unreliable and I mostly didn't want to do this unless I really had to. On the other hand, you can parry enemies which will stun them momentarily. Some enemies even have shields that don't necessarily require you to do this, but it is very encouraged. As for the actual abilities, I already covered your sword attacks, but your exo unit also allows you to fist the f*** out of your enemies. Pressing the button will bring back that EMP attack from the first game, stunning enemies and just obliterating the weak ones. Holding the button down will either be a grappling hook or will pull enemies to you. Holding the button down while sprinting will charge up a rocket punch, which is exactly what it sounds like. And if you jump into the air and hold the button down, you will do what they call a quake punch. Basically, this is very similar to the sword attack in the air. All of this actually feels really good, and I found fighting bosses to be very fun. Yeah, beating up the small ones can be fun, but having an actual opponent that you need to put some thought into is enjoyable. However, I have one really, really big complaint that just leaves me baffled. You see that bar in the bottom left? Well, one of those is your health bar, but the white bar above that is your energy bar. All of these abilities, share an energy bar. 
Why? In the first game, every skill was on its own cooldown, allowing you to mix and mash to try to do as much damage as possible. Finding good combinations to destroy the enemy was incredibly fun. But that's not an option in this game because you just run out of energy. Yeah, this severely limits player expression and creativity. You can't really experiment with abilities like you want to. I don't know why they made this change. It is very detrimental to the combat. Thankfully, the weapons do get some upgrades to help you out. These upgrades are just secondary ammo types, basically almost all explosive. For example, the shotgun gets incendiary shotgun shells and the pistol gets a grenade launcher. This will stumble even bosses, so it is quite useful to set up your attacks. And these guns are the only conclusion as to why I can come to when it comes to your limited energy bar. They wanted you to use the guns more, but if your skills were on a cooldown, you'd still use them anyway. So again, I don't know why they did this. You can get upgrades to upgrade your abilities, but none of these have to do with your cooldowns or how much energy you have. So yeah, I don't get it. I marathoned through both these games one after another, and it was very jarring. In a similar way, there's a few instances that they added into this game in an attempt to break up the combat that are equally jarring and rather annoying. One of them is Force Stealth, because God, everyone knows how much I love Force Stealth. This is the worst kind of Force Stealth, too. If you get seen, you just instantly fail. It's not really difficult. It just feels like a complete waste of time. This game isn't very long, so it's not like you really needed to break the pace up this much. I don't know, man. This is just completely out of place. I don't like it. I don't think it should be in the game at all. Later on in the game, there is a driving section, which is very basic and pretty short, so I can't complain too much. I Again, I don't know why this is here either. It's just WASD and clicking. That's all your controls. You can't look around. You can't actually aim the rocket launcher on the front. You just click and it homes in on the vehicles and that's it. It's not bad. It's just very basic. Thankfully, it's short, so again, I can't complain too much. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the whole game. It's pretty short. It's only about an hour and a half, so you will beat it very quickly. But again, this is a single person making this game in their off time to try to compete with AAA titles. Well, maybe not compete, but be of AAA quality. And honestly, as much complaining as I did, it's an incredibly interesting game that can be a lot of fun. The stronger enemies are rather enjoyable to fight, and when you first start playing this game, you're naturally going to be a lot worse by the time you beat the game. By the time I beat the game, looking at the footage from earlier in the game was just awful. I didn't even really want to show it, but I don't have time to re-record everything, so see me learning in real time. Anyway, that about sums it up. Interesting game. Try it out if you really want to. I could endorse it, but don't be expecting the best game you have ever played. It's a neat little time waster that will distract you from other things in your life for a couple of hours. Before I end this video, as always, I want to give a huge thanks to Into the AM. Go to intotheam.com slash dragon shirts to get 10% off site-wide, which stacks on top of these bundle deals. And of course, I want to give a huge thanks to everyone that joined me over on Twitch. My Twitch is twitch.tv slash jerk for gaming dragon. If you subscribe, you get to see my videos ahead of time. That's what those names are up there. And as always, thank you for watching this video.